Hi, it's Double Nineteen Seventy Five, and today I'm bringing you me playing some chess. And um, this is me playing chess through the Xbox, uh, through the internet. And I thought I'd just bring it to you and tell you some chess stories while I play. Um, I thought this was quite a funny chess story, even though I do come out um, of this story looking like a bit of a little shit. I was, so that's the way it's going to look. Um, this is probably close to um, me at my worst when it came to playing chess, me at my most colossal arrogance. Um, so I'll try and give you some context. I was board three for the county at this point. Um, we just, I was playing for my senior school. Uh, we just won a tournament. Um, we had the trophy. I hadn't lost a single game all season. I'd drawn one, won all the others. And the one I drew is against board one in the county. So all in all, a successful season for me. I've, I've done, you know, pretty much all that could be asked of me. Um, the only thing is, the teacher who's supposedly coaching our little team um, is um, an arrogant geography teacher, PE teacher, thinks he's an amazing sportsman, and just was one of those guys I, who, you know, I don't know, had this really sort of smug sense of superiority and um, thought he was a bit of a ladies' man. He, There's always that teacher that's like the sleazy, slimy guy, and this was that dude. And um, for some reason, he got a bee in his bonnet about the way I played chess, the fact I played too fast, the fact I played too reckless, um, and um, the fact I never listened to anything he said. And, you know, uh, there was reasons for that. The guy was a moron and couldn't play. And... Um, I wasn't shy about telling him that. So, on the last day of the season, we're at a place about 60 miles from where we live um, at this competition. Uh, we've played our final game, and um, we're get, I think we're getting ready to leave. And he decides to challenge me to a game of chess in the practice room, where he's going to teach me a lesson um, for being so arrogant. Now, the problem is he's never going to be able to teach me a lesson because I knew full well this guy was appalling. Um, he, he was a county class player, uh, an adult. You know, I knew... Um, well, I knew who he played against regularly and I destroyed all of them. And um, I knew of his ability. I'd never actually played, it, played him or seen him play, but I knew of his ability and I knew the people that he used to lose to and I used to destroy them. So, I kind of baited him into playing me by being so arrogant and nasty to him and saying, you know, why should I listen to you? You have no idea what you're talking about. Um, and I was an egotistical little shit. And uh, he took the bait and he decided to play me. So, we've got this teacher who nobody likes, sat playing a kid who is a conceited, gobby little shit. And the game kicks off and slowly but surely the practice room um, people start migrating over and by about halfway through this game there's about 30 kids watching this including you know the all the kids that have gone there from my school and um, my teacher had, this guy had um, a few rules when it came to playing chess you know people had to play in a proper manner they had to be sportsmanlike and he did like them to uh, never resign, never surrender. Um, you used to get a right telling off if you resigned. Even if your position was completely untenable and it was pointless carrying on, he would like tear you a new one if you resigned. So, of course, I wanted to make him resign. Uh, why did I want to do this? Well, it's because I was a dick. Um, I wanted to make him resign in front of a load of kids, and I wanted to mock him for being terrible at chess. And um, I was really, really enjoying myself. I was being really gobby, I was being really arrogant, I was winding this guy up royally. Um, I basically uh, left him with a king and three pawns trapped and I just destroyed every other single one of his pieces. And then I started pushing pawns and I promoted a queen. And then I promoted a second queen. And then I promoted a third queen. And then I promoted a fourth queen. And I'm moving down to promote my fifth queen. And at the point I get my fifth queen, I've got him totally trapped. And the whole time I'm just ribbing him and mocking him. Um, I, uh, at the point I get the fifth queen, he finally throws in the towel and resigns. And 
he's look he looks around and realizes at that point that all these kids are watching um he gets really flustered and angry and um about two hours later um i'm having to find a lift home because he's taken the minibus and the kids back to school and left me behind um and i actually ended up having to hitch a ride uh with a parent that i knew uh, of one of the junior school kids that my dad had taken to the tournament um my you know my dad's team's played in the lower divisions of this same tournament and um my dad was actually there but i never went to see my dad about this because i knew he'd probably try and punch this teacher in the throat for leaving me there but you know i just thought it was really funny and i, I it was hilarious so i hitched a ride back uh and then this teacher tried to pull one where he tried to get my name omitted from the trophy um he uh he gave the list of names to the school receptionist and the school receptionist was like there's only three names here it's a four-man team and he's like that's the only ones i want you to put on the trophy um one of the other players mums was a chemistry teacher at our school and um he was the, i think he was the third board in our team um and the receptionist phoned her and said look what's going on i don't get what's going on but there were four people in this team and she was like, yeah. And she confirmed that, you know, I was board one. Um, there was another guy at board two who's uh, one of my old friends from school. Such a nice kiddie. Uh, I was really glad that he got this trophy, actually. Um, board three was her son. And board four was hilarious. Board four was a kid that at the start of the season I was coaching to play. He'd never gone to the junior school that I went to, so he wasn't indoctrinated into chess early. And uh, he was really jealous of the fact I had all these chess, chess trophies and stuff. And he was like, my parents would be really proud if I had something like that. And I was like, well, I'll get you something like that. Just join this board four. We'll make out you can play a bit. And I'll coach you. And by the end of the season, you'll be okay. And you'd, you'd have won a decent amount by then. And it worked. And he got his chess trophy. Um, so it was really fun. Um, I managed to, I did actually get my name on that trophy. Though I didn't give a fuck, to be honest. I didn't. I wouldn't have cared. I would have actually preferred it if the teacher had got his own way and had my t name removed from that trophy because that would have been funnier. Because <laughs> I managed to annoy this guy to the point that he tried to get my name taken off a trophy um, <laughs> you know, and ditch me uh, in a town miles from home. Um, I mean, seriously, he tried that these days. Back in the, back in the early 90s, well, the late 80s and early 90s, that sort of behaviour was acceptable. <laughs> but I think you'd have gone into so much trouble doing it now. Um, God, that was so funny. I just remember the look on his face and the embarrassment as um, I promoted that fifth queen. But anyway, that's all for this story. I sound like a total douchebag, but it's funny. That's all. Thanks for watching.